Good afternoon, all of you. Welcome back to Tangled Bank. Next is Professor Paramjit Singh. He's, of course, he's, uh, uh, you know, a part of our family. And he's now going to talk on wild Himalayan bamboos and exciting talk. We are all waiting for this uh, interesting talk. Uh, right now, we just got delayed because of some technical glitch. And after that forthcoming talk, Sir Arvind Mathyastra is going to talk on mollusks tomorrow at 11 a.m. And Karthik Balasubramanian is going to talk on diatoms 3.30 p.m. tomorrow. So this is going to be the concluding talk of today's session. Professor Paramjit Singh has done his PhD from University of Jodhpur in 18, uh, 1986 on taxonomic revision of the family Zygophilaceae and Vitaceae in India. And he has served as director of the Botanical Survey of India for many years before joining our university as a professor uh, last year. More than 13 new taxa were discovered by him, including a new bamboo genus from Arunachal Pradesh. I hope uh, Professor Paramjit is now going to share the story of the bamboo genus discovery in today's talk. He has participated in Hooker's Trail in Sikkim and Gondwana land expedition to 17 countries of South Asia as well as in Africa. And he has authored around 100 research papers and more than 25 books and guided four PhD students. He initiated a massive program for digitization of Indian taxonomic literature, archival materials, herbaria, and a website called eFlora India. It's one of the super popular website. And uh, of course, this is uh, one of the, you know, the landmark database of the taxonomist in India. So credit goes to Professor Paramjit Singh when he was uh, director of the BSI. He initiated this task. He's also a fellow of prestigious Linnaean Society of London. So it is, it's the most society for, uh, you know, the taxonomist. So he's uh, a renowned taxonomy has got several award of course one slide is not enough but still to not worth is some awards of father at santapu medal uh, by the association of plant taxonomy in 2012 and uh, professor vv sivarajan gold medal by indian association of angiosperm taxonomy in 2013 uh, including several other medals so professor paramjit singh a warm welcome to you uh, here in this talk and uh, we are waiting for your presentation about bamboos wild himalayan bamboos Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Felix, uh, uh, for such an elaborate uh, introduction. In fact, uh, I think it, it was too, too, too much for me. I'm, I feel I am still learning uh, the tricks of taxonomy. I'm still a student of taxonomy. Uh, today, I will share with the students and all of you, dear participants, uh, my journey through Himalayas, uh, studying various bamboos, which I still found, uh, I find that they are very difficult to identify. I still uh, uh, get confused sometimes when I find any new, new bamboo. Uh, bamboos, as you know, they are distributed uh, in a all continents except Europe. Naturally, they are not found in Europe and of course Antarctica being very extreme climate. In Australia, they are only restricted to these northern few patches. And in Southern America, male distribution is in, as you can see, in the tropical belt throughout the world. Uh, 
in south america this peru region is the only exception particularly those drier plains uh, below andes mountain in india bamboos are mainly distributed in himalayas and western ghats and bamboos actually they defy the normal description of any flowering plant uh, they they are actually basically they are grasses they belong to family poaceae and are grouped under sub family bamboo bambusoid and, and uh, traditionally they have a long uh, relationship with human beings human culture socially they are and ecologically they are very relevant and there are even certain countries where the culture itself is known as a bamboo culture taxonomically they are one of the most difficult group of at least flowering plants where identification as you know in most of the flowering plants we morphologically we depend on flower as well as fruit to identify them but here basically they are monogropic uh, monocarpic uh, uh, plants they flower and die and their flowering period uh, i mean their life span is also uh, quite variable from a few years in few bamboos like most of the dendrocalmus and bamboo sub species to right up to 120 years in some of the philostachy species which are found mainly in japan china and uh, we have one species in northeast also of philostachy they are tall arborescent grasses around 85 genera and 1500 species worldwide and they have great diversity in size ranging from few centimeters to tree like more than 30 meter in height they are being used for more than 1500 different types of uses oriental scholars artists they have praised them by in their uh, paintings in various rhymes and in they have given them a lot of tributes it's also considered as a symbolically a symbol of uh, fidelity integrity and constancy and purity uh, variously known as poor man's timber credit to coffin plant mankind's best friend miracle grass uh, plant with thousand faces and green gold and another very interesting feature of bamboos is their growth pattern Uh, they don't grow like other flowering plants they don't have secondary growth they don't have any bark uh, their stems true stems are in fact underground rhizomatous uh, of different types they can be clump forming uh, known as amphipodial they are uh, uh, known as uh, sympodial and there are uh, runner type bamboos also where this rhizome keeps on growing from one end and gives a, uh, a very very different appearance and from these rhizomes every year during a, a growing season new shoots come which are known as cums and they can grow at a rate of 2 to 3 uh, decameters per day that is decimeters uh, that is up to uh, almost 1 feet per day which is the, i mean makes them one of the fastest growing plants in the world if we see uh, from modern perspective of as per grass phylogeny group bamboos are if you read this uh, phylogeny uh, tree in a in a clockwise manner from here this is the base and bamboos are grouped together at very near the base of this group bamboo swaidi sub family is here and uh, most of them are phylogenetically coming together uh, all uh, woody bamboos asian as well as american and other 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 grasses are more in, uh, evolved and uh, they are at the base of this grass uh, phylogeny if you see a typical uh, bamboo plant it has got as i told you a rhizome system 
and there is a this column which is a, a aerial sort of a stem we can say uh, which is visible above the grounds and this curve will complete its full growth within one uh, uh, growth season so first year if it is growing then it will attain its complete length within that particular year because of uh, presence of as you can see here there are nodes and internodes these internodes and there is a intercalary meristem at the young stage when uh, new shoots are coming it will be in this form and suddenly like those of you might have seen those telescopic aerials of uh, antenna antennas of uh, earlier radios uh, it will suddenly start growing those nodes inter internodal region will expand and it will attain its full length and after attaining that length the lateral buds will start giving leaves here and another uh, very special feature of bamboos is the presence of two types of leaves one is uh, covering this culm which is known as culm sheath or culm leaf and other ones are these uh, leaves which are on the branches culm leaves because as i told you the flowers are very seldom present in uh, and there are a number of species in which case i mean they have been described based on only morphological characters we have not seen the flowers and fruits so far so these culm sheets or culm leaf play very important role in uh, identification and they are variable from genus to genus even species to species so species identification based on characters of uh, culm sheet as well as leaf uh, leaf structure also has got the sim similarities with this it's a modification the same way so uh, these two help in identification uh, another interesting feature is these culm sheets will be present in most of the species during initial elongation phase once the uh, culm has attained its height they are mostly deciduous and they will not be seen on the culm so collection of these culm sheets is very important if flower and fruits are not available so they play very important role as i told you and the whether the stem is hollow what is the uh, other characters on the culm they are also very important in identification as as we were uh, discussing about the uh, smallest and uh, largest bamboo this is one of the smallest bamboo which we also have seen in india recently we have collected in arunachal uh, arundin area february now uh, it is uh, reclassified into another genus sarocalmus february it's known as now it grows right um, only up to 30 cm and in height and from a distance it looks like a, a, a grass covering in an amido as you can see uh, habitat here on the left side on right side there is a uh flowering specimen of the smallest bamboo which is found in india and that other one is dendrocalmus gigantea uh, which is the largest bamboo which we see in india as well as in himalayas as i was telling you it vegetative phase can vary from 1 to 120 years and once it is uh, flowering then it dies and it's one of the botanical enigma which scientists are still working uh, once it dies off why it is dying off and what causes it to uh, flower gregariously another feature is that all the populations of this uh, mother uh, which are there from the mother stock they will bloom at the same time throughout the world uh, as if somebody has set an alarm clock in them and uh, botanists they say they have a genetic imprint that determines the cyclic flowering so being a basically a morphological morphological taxonomist i will feel the some youngsters will take up this challenge and try to solve this puzzle which so far we have not been able to uh, find solution to and unique features of bamboo uh, as as i told you there it's a strength is they say almost as equal, as good as 
steel. They are straightness, they are light in weight, they are freshness, they are, they are very easy to work with. Those artisans who know how to work with the bamboos, they find it very easy to split it. They should know how to split it, which way the fiber, of course, is going in one way only. And they, they're, they're fast growth and their ability to cover those areas which are degraded. And uh, they play a very important role in ecological restoration in areas which are degraded. In fact, bamboos have been neglected in studies uh, uh, throughout. I will, I will give you some highlights. Here I would like to highlight in 2000, year 2000, our ministry started a taxonomic capacity building initiative, Indian government, Ministry of Environment and Forest. And after 10 years uh, where during Nagoya protocol uh, meeting, Nagoya meeting at, uh, in Japan, uh, our minister had taken this document, which was the first initiative taken by any government at a national level to build the capacity in those group of plants where the identification was the main impediment in understanding the plants. And we were finding in bamboos, uh, algae, fungi, ferns, uh, some of the insects and gymnosperms that there were very few people who were working on. So I was lucky to have been given a project on this uh, capacity building in 2002 and where I also started learning. Uh, it's also time for me to remember those people who have helped me in uh, understanding the bamboo. Uh, one of the guiding force behind this whole initiative was Professor mm H.Y. -hmm. Mohan Ram, who is no more with us now, but he has been always uh, inspiration for all of us who were working on different aspects, always encouraging youngsters to take up new challenges. And of course, my director at that time, Dr. Sanjappa was very supportive of this. Dr. Uh, uh, Vijay Nair, who was the overall coordinator of uh, Grasses project, he was also very cooperative and gave me this opportunity. And I had just joined in uh, Sikkim at that time, a few years back. Then, uh, we started working on in on uh, bamboos there and as everyone is talking about panda and bamboos in china but we also have got our own panda red panda which is also dependent on uh, bamboos in sikkim uh, it uh, uh, in uh, though it lives on trees tree branches uh, and uh, it makes uh, its feeding habit depends on so many species of temperate bamboos, particularly Arandinaria, which is now Sarocalmus racemosus, species like that. Uh, you must be knowing there is a international bamboo organization which is working from China, known as INBAR. They have also prioritized bamboos based on commercial potential, their ability to do rehabilitation of environment and their usefulness in rural industries. Uh, and of course, bamboos play all these three important roles. And most of the species in Northeast India uh, are, uh, are filling all these. They have decided to go for 18 uh, species uh, of bamboos, depending on uh, their utility and their marketability. Uh, and in fact, there is a world trade in bamboos, which has been estimated around uh, seven years back to $2 billion. That is only external, uh, I mean, uh, export-oriented business uh, on bamboos, but nobody has calculated the domestic demands for bamboo and how much it is uh, uh, beneficial to local artisans, local people, how it is uh, improving the livelihood in the country. That figure is much more than the international trade. Uh, so bamboo is a very important uh, element uh, as rightly said, as a green gold. It can improve the uh, quality of life of people, provided they are using the right species, they are given right inputs. And let, let, let me take you historically to the first bamboo and how much we know about bamboo now. The first bamboo came in a species plantarum, which uh, Carl Linnaeus published uh, in 1753. And this bamboo he named as Arando bamboos. And we know this bamboo as uh, 
uh, bamboos are bamboos now. And interesting, uh, a very interesting fact about this bamboo is it was uh, based on, if you can see here, read, I think this must be eligible to you. It is written, Illy, uh, that is a reference is given to Reed's Altus Malabaricus, uh, volume 2, 16, page 25. So this was illustrated by Reed in Hortus Malabaricus. A very nice plate of this plant was given there. Based on that plate, uh, Linnaeus in 1753, along with some other literature he has mentioned here, he published this as an Arundo bamboos. And later on, a specimen of this was also found in one of the Herman Herbarium in British Museum. Uh, I think British Museum only, and uh, they have uh, epitypified this and it has been identified. So in 1753, we were knowing only one bamboo that was also put under a grass. Uh, but now, as uh, we had already uh, discussed, there are more than 75 genera, more than uh, 75 genera, and more than 1500 species worldwide of bamboos. So this I discussed with you. And in Indian context, then Roxburgh was the next man. And all of you must be knowing that bamboos are mostly have grass like uh, seeds, but there are few bamboos like this one you are seeing here, uh, known as, uh, at that time he described, Roxburgh described it uh, in 1832 as a bambusa becchifera. Uh, now it is known as uh, bambusa, uh, it's known as melocana becchifera. And it flowers after around 40, 45 years cycle. And uh, last uh, flowering of this bamboo was seen in 2008 uh, uh, in Mizoram, uh, Meghalaya, and whole of the Northeast. In fact, this bamboo covers a lot of area in whole of the Northeast and uh, Himalayan, uh, Himachal, Himalayan, uh, this part, what is that, Arunachal, and some parts of Sikkim. Uh, and once it flowers means lot of area uh, uh, is cleared of vegetation because this bamboo will die there and it will produce those fruits which are edible to rats. Rat manifestation is there. And in 60s, when last time they flowered, there was a famine, they say, in Mizoram. Uh, but this time, uh, government was very, very, very uh, careful about this. They have taken care to collect all the fruits and uh, germinate them and regrow in those areas so that the, the uh, area is not uh, left clear of the um, bamboos and it's again planted there. Some of the works after uh, uh, after uh, the work of uh, Roxburgh are, if we see, are uh, those of course, and uh, Gamble has published, Gamble has done a very good work on uh, bamboos of uh, British India. He published a, a nice treatise. Uh, bamboos can be classified basically based on habit into three forms. One are tree form like, which are, uh, uh, as uh, bambusa, bamboos, as I talked about. And then there is uh, dendrocalmus, all the species, most of the species of dendrocalmus are tree-like. Uh, then there is another very interesting bamboo in Arunachal, which is found uh, in Apat uh, Tale Valley, Apatani region, uh, which is uh, close to and related to a, uh, our Japanese and Chinese bamboo fellow stack is Asamika. And they, their livelihood, and I mean, this part, one species is used by the people in different ways uh, in this valley. Are, all their houses are uh, bamboo, constructed with bamboo, of course, with the modernization, they have uh, new structures also coming, but they have traditionally using, as you can see here, the floor of all their huts are made up of bamboo only, whole bamboo. Uh, culms are used as a base uh, for they, they they have a tradition to use bamboo only as a as a floor and uh, they their knife uh, very nice uh, encasing made of bamboo here you can see which is used by the people there 
and there are second is a shrubby type of bamboo which most of the temperate bamboos come under this class and there is one very good example of the use of these temperate uh, shrubby bamboos uh, in most of the arunachalis in archery all their uh, arrows and uh, bows are made of these shrubby bamboos and these are examples of uh, shrubby bamboos and the, some of the shabby bamboos have got clear nodes, but there are few which have got spiny internode, uh, spiny nodes, uh, as you can see here, Kimnocalmus armatus, so found in Arunachal again. And very few of them are uh, climbers also, uh, species of uh, basically Dinocloa, Melocalmus, and New Microcalmus. And there are uh, a few of the bamboos, uh, particularly, which are very rare and threatened in the Northeast. And one such genus we went, when we went in 2016 to Arunachal, uh, actually we were uh, trying to locate this uh, species, which was described in 1989 by Dr. Majumdar, but we could not see any collection or any live specimen earlier. So we made a special expedition to Arunachal to visit the areas and see this plant. And uh, first three, four days, we were just searching, searching, and uh, we could not locate it uh, on way to Machu, uh, this Machuca, actually. In fact, that valley when we entered, and this was there, young shoots were coming. You can see very characteristic. Nobody can miss this uh, species in the field when it is uh, starting to come up. You see the culm sheets have got a swollen base here, which is very characteristic in this. Uh, um, species and we could locate this at a few locations and we have uh, we think it is a vulnerable species and uh, we have also proposed for its conservation but uh, uh, fortunately this area is uh, so far not having any disturbances so we feel the natural habitat is conserved uh, as you see this uh, name is was earlier under Shizostachium and later on Nathani has published it as a, a species under Stepletonia. And Stepletonia was a genus which we we just luckily come came across in uh, Arunachal Pradesh uh, uh, when we visited uh, in 2006, uh, uh, six to eight, I think three years, we were constantly in um, search of this plant. Uh, this plant was earlier uh, described by Nathani, Dr. H.P. Nathani who, uh, from FRI. He has been working on bamboos for so many years. Uh, but he, it was our good luck that we could see it in flowering and fruiting for first time uh, during that period. And luckily, when we see that it was something very interesting, never known uh, in the wild um, in that stage, uh, in that particular group, uh, in that stage, and uh, this was something very amazing to see in uh, uh, in the in the uh, wild and see actually in the field how it looks like. Uh, very first sight, I could uh, see that it is something very interesting. And another interesting species uh, factor about this particular uh, uh, species is this uh, 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 Stapletonia runachalense. Uh, that its internodes are very long, almost 1.5 meter long. One, this uh, internode here, when it is mature, it will be as long as one, one of the longest in the world, in fact, internodes. And uh, Dr. Nathani published it uh, based on only morphology, uh, basic uh, I mean, morphology and vegetative characters only. And we were lucky to get it and published it in our own uh, in-house uh, BSI journal. And later on, it was found to be a good uh, genus, and it has been kept in Melokeni, and people are still working on molecular phylogeny and trying to place it. And uh, later on, Dr. Nathani uh, has placed uh, that other species, Seshagiriana, also under this genus. Uh, initially, it had only one species. Now, it has got two species. A very characteristic uh, fruit, which is like Melokena, fleshy but a small uh, zizifus like uh, one uh, rounded and all the fruits are coming in a group and uh, first when i saw it in a uh, in a initial flowering stage because flowers are coming in a head there is another genus which is known as a cephalostachium uh, based on 
flowers are arranged in uh, head like structure cephalo means head so because flowers uh, or spikelets as they are known as in uh, uh, bamboos and grasses they are arranged in a head like structure that was name was given to this genus phallostachium first we thought it is very close to phallostachium based on the flowers but but when fruit came fleshy fruits in this group uh, are not known and that to such large almost equivalent to melocanna fruits uh, so that was very interesting and uh, we named it after stapleton who has worked on nepal and bhutan bamboos and we we thought uh, we should honor him by naming this genus because he had put more than 10 years in field in nepal and uh, bhutan to work on uh, various bamboos and he in fact uh, Uh, initiated the modern field works on bamboo and uh, and solved so many intricate problems in bamboos and another interesting species which we found in meghalaya was uh, arandin area clarki when we saw it uh, and uh, then we named it as a melocanna clarki based on again flowers and fruits uh coming to the conservation of these bamboos of course uh, uh, there are as in uh, other groups of plants uh, uh, conservation of bamboo is also practiced in two ways either in in situ or uh, by ex situ conservation so both the methods are used here for ex situ conservation the best uh, place are gardens as you know and in india we have got these uh, many gardens where most of the bamboo germ plasm are being collected and preserved and being propagated when whenever they came to know about uh, and in fact uh, if you will see this the oldest garden is indian botanical garden at kolkata which is more than 2 uh, it was established in 1787 uh, so uh, this one of the oldest in whole south asia and uh, other is botanical garden at padapani they have got the oldest collections and of course the best collections are there at palot kerala 48 but most of the himalayan species are there at chesa and shillong and himachal pradesh uh, still a lot of work is there to be done on himalayan bamboos i think we could in all these year touch only tip of the iceberg Uh, still uh, there are so many challenges so many areas where so many uh, bamboos where we don't know even the complete uh, facts about those bamboo even morphological uh, they are incomplete knowledge is, is there uh, so there is still a lot to be done and we could only do a little bit what what we uh, and uh, utilization uh, by of course as i discussed there are a lot of things which uh can be done with bamboos and in 9, 2017 uh, another thing our government has done they have taken bamboo out of the forest act uh, after 90 years in fact bamboo has been legally not considered as a tree and uh, as it is a taxonomically a grass so they have excluded it from uh forest act but of course all bamboos which are growing in forest areas are covered under forest act but those out of forest area they they can be treated as any other uh, non timber product so that is an, another very interesting uh, development recently that has taken up and uh, that we hope uh, will uh, promote the uses of bamboo and bamboo as i was telling they are being used for all different type of activities northeast is completely dependent on uh, bamboos as you can see right uh, from it's really a coffin to it's from cradle to coffin plant and even uh, now activated charcoal is being made out of this uh, there is a very special dish which is made in north is particularly manipur uh, uh, that is uh, 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 this rice which is cooked inside bamboo young bamboo shoots fresh bamboo sh shoots and uh, they are burned and then uh, once they are ripe then they are eaten they, that gives a special flavor to the those glutinous rices which are local varieties which are grown there and of course bamboo shoots themselves are being used as edible and now so many new things are coming up with the bamboo like bamboo sofa sets furniture 
balls so nice of uh, bam, uh, new products even bamboo uh, this composite material is coming now bamboo flooring made up with the, and this is last year uh, uh, manipur speaker had uh, used this uh, bamboo bike during a bam, uh, world bamboo day uh, with these two things i will uh, now open the uh, uh, our platform for discussion any questions thank you very much dr felix for giving me opportunity to share my a few things within i think one hour or 40 minutes 30 minutes are not sufficient to discuss about such a vast subject as bamboos uh, any questions audience can ask me now Thank you so much, sir, uh, for a wonderful presentation. So it's a privilege to be with you here. Uh, it's it's really interesting. Different things about bamboo. Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, Felix, I can hear you. Hello. I think Felix has got some trouble with this. सर पंकज है सर हाँ जी डॉक्टर सर बताइए सर इट वाज अ फंटास्टिक प्रेजेंटेशन सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर मेरा जो क्वेश्चन था मेरा क्वेश्चन मतलब बहुत स्पेसिफिक शॉट ऑफ है पीछे मतलब जो मेरी अपनी अंडरस्टैंडिंग है कि जैसे जो ये बैंबू प्लांट है इट्स एक्चुअली गोइंग रैपिडली इनटू � uh, but I have seen many papers and I have seen many researchers who are actually engaged in uh, uh, tissue culture propagation of uh, uh, certain plant species. Uh, uh, the one of which, which you spoke in your uh, presentation, that is uh, Phyllostachus. Uh, so, no. So, my uh, I mean question is to you specifically that uh, uh, is it required for the bamboo to move into micro micro propagation or something say like uh, tissue culture uh, activities? Uh, required for the conservation of this species? Uh, Dr. Pankaj, it's a very interesting question. In fact, uh, uh, this may not be so suitable for conservation, but of course, uh, industry is using it because when you see, I remember uh, we got so many queries from uh, paper pulp industry, particularly. They are uh, interested in a certain length of fiber for paper quality because they don't want any any anything which should be larger or of any specific uh, type of bamboo they want for uh, their paper industry so that bamboo if uh, that clone particular clone which is suitable for uh, uh, paper industry if the industry wants to propagate that at a large scale so initially i think they have to go for uh, tissue culture only because rhizome formation will take some time and if you have to keep that uh, stock uh, uh, alive for a long time and that particular line alive initially tissue culture is uh, is required but otherwise traditionally for conservation work we are using all other traditional methods because bamboos can be uh, uh, very easily propagated uh, by uh, traditional cutting methods by rooting the cuttings uh, as well as by uh, splitting the rhizomes as in most of the rhizomatous crops you know uh, one can do easily so that practice is being done in bamboos also okay uh, thank you sir my uh, second question is uh, again very specific sir uh, so that is uh, basically sir uh, you spoke about flowering in the bamboo species and uh, uh, you um, uh, know the um, uh, I mean, uh, years after which this uh, particular bamboo is going to flower. So, sir, do we no, have... No, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Pankaj, we, we are still not knowing exactly that after how many, very few species are there where cycle, where okay. the cycle of a, I mean, so for example, in Phyllostachys uh, pubis as one of the species, uh, I think which is a Japanese species. Uh, the, they know because they uh, they that those that species is uh, very closely related to monks and monasteries, 
so they have kept old records of that species they know this is one of the longest uh, uh, period of where 120 years we know so, around so, so that years. is my but yeah, in that most is specifically of the, my question my most of the indian species we we don't have a complete data on particular uh, uh, group except one is meloc melocana we know now that is it is around 40 to 45 because of this famine uh, and recording at that time in 60s and this time in again 2005 6 so these are very few species where we know and there are uh, so many uh, for example the stepertonia genus which we have described we don't know when it will flower again so we cannot say unless somebody keeps track of this we have already told for us to keep track of this so we will not be able to know the cycle some species we know definitely so, we know. some yes. student yes. ask questions so my one yeah, of the questions pankaj wanted to ask pankaj wanted to ask in ek second ek second zara ek second please ek second rukna zara sir now mera jo specific question hai that is like is uh, bsi is keeping any uh, record uh, which is kind of a shareable to we people i mean uh, do they have uh, location and uh, species wise information if they can share with us no no i i think i have that information i have to dig it that i i for because this uh, this work we had done at that time because we wanted to know when will um, because when we started this project our first uh, um, i i mean uh, first uh, task was to do the literature survey survey and try to find out uh, that i can let you know okay, but sir. once i contact my so i, I have okay. a few okay. questions for the students and uh, so basically when i was uh, actually back to the lab um, sir, i would like to discuss this particular uh, uh, no problem I mean, we can discuss we can discuss we can discuss. so right, okay, a... sir. thank you so much. thank you sir. yeah sir tanya bansal she asked is there any disease of the bamboo which can be removed by the plant tissue culture methodology similar question she asked Mm-hmm. Actually, when um, these diseases are there, more than 150 diseases have been reported now. I have not covered, touched upon that aspect. Uh, basically, when we start uh, tissue culture and uh, captive uh, plantations, so these diseases usually come. One of the most common is the root rot, that is a fusarium. Fusarium is very common in plantations, particularly in bamboos, uh, and there are so many other beetles also. They are there. If you and inter- another interesting thing when you have asked about the pest another thing i would like to share with the students is world's smallest uh, frog uh, it in america in southern american i think one country i forgot it roosts inside the node, uh, internodes of uh, bamboo uh, beetles they make holes in that uh, bamboo uh, uh, internode and this uh, bat then goes inside and roosts inside <laughs> interesting very interesting uh, session sir and uh, actually you know my internet again when <laughs> went down uh, sorry for that yeah it's, it's it happens every time so for me the bamboo is something like a, you know it's like a productivity or a patience it's testing the patience so there are so many books like uh, sony the success story and mostly this productivity books uh, they boast that uh, it's an overnight success you know just within one night the entire success but bamboo plantation needs a lot of patience like uh, I, what i heard is that if you put a seed it will not even sprout for the next 5 years so it will take such long time and once it sprout within one week the plant is taller than you you know it's like looks like a fantastic growth but it takes a lot of efforts for the long time uh, what is your thought on this i think it's a very nice symbolism for the productivity you know Uh, yeah. but uh, yeah i i i don't know about the dormancy in what what why have what i have heard so far is in bamboos uh, uh, because they 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 do the gregarious flowering most of the time and then they will do the um, uh, is a mast uh, uh, seeding is there uh-huh. so they will not give any opportunity to the predators to feed upon them so uh, mo- in most of the cases bamboos will immediately what we have seen in the field most of the cases they will immediately germinate there so that the died clumps are again taken over by the new generation new generation with the young dna uh, and one theory one of course hypothesis is there that the, when the dna is not able to replicate it becomes old then it starts flowering and then it 
wants all old generation to be wiped out and a new generation immediately takes up that land which is available but this may be what you are saying may be true about some species of bamboos where the dormancy period is there uh, regarding your second question what was that no so now let me take out one question from a participant his name is uh, sanjay kumar and uh, he is asking our prime minister emphasize on indigenous manufacturing and the use of indigenous products under vocals uh, for our local scheme you know vocals for our local scheme how bamboo industry help in this regard with raising income in rural livelihood can you please elaborate the status of bamboo's research in india and its future asked by sanjay kumar uh, in fact there is already ministry of agriculture has got a bamboo mission special mission for bamboo and i think now even it is coming under prime minister's direct control uh, uh, so there is a lot of emphasis in northeast particularly where bamboo is mainly distributed and of course if we go by the area wise area distribution is central india there the number of species may not be more but um, species uh, one or two species are dominating in those thorny um, uh, bamboo forests uh, of course uh, they are trying their level best to uh, to value add to the uh, this whole bamboo chain Uh, but i think as citizens as consumers it's our responsibility also to uh, shift to those uh, indigenous things and don't go for the cheaper versions which are easily available in the market and go for the versions which are uh, as i told you even this kapad there is one institute in guwahati which has come up with all furniture which is made up of uh, bamboo uh, bamboo furniture bamboo sofa set bamboo chairs uh there i could not show those all those slides are there uh and they are selling it uh, i think it's the citizens who have to support this cause as khadi has again taken up and khadi masks are very becoming very popular now uh, they said they they have so many orders for khadi masks that they are not able to keep up with the uh, demand for khadi masks similar way i think bamboo can also play a very important role if, if we can uh, start a movement for that problem is Uh, the demand for bamboo is somewhere else and the uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, industry so far uh, doing it uh, i mean mainly is it's it's in northeast they were having so many problems initially about even machinery was not available and then we had a tie up with our small scale industries in punjab haryana and they have made special uh, those small uh, units which can split the bamboo because bamboo splitting is not a easy i mean it it takes labor so they have made so many uh, such uh, machines now which makes it uh, easy but i think it's a demand which will drive the economy in this case if you have more demand for products which are bamboo uh, uh, i mean um, it's mentioned it's derived from bamboo oh. like flooring i told you uh, if oh. everyone goes for bamboo flooring rather than other wooden flooring like uh, other com- composite which are coming Uh, in fact government when last time tsunami came in andaman uh, uh, it was northeast which ka, which made a collapsible uh, small uh, i mean uh, uh, those uh, uh, one bedroom apartment sort of a things which can be dismantled and again uh, made in andaman so they they were very quick in developing those composite houses for uh, uh, andaman people so which were shipped to andaman So, so such housing is very very easy to be made uh, with the bamboo so, so as you discuss about the bamboo mission so when there is a bamboo mission so i think the point is the bamboo conservation so some student uh, asked the relevant questions the flowering is coming after 60 years so how could flow delayed in flowering inhibit the conservation of the bamboo this is the first point second why should not we go ahead with the germplasm collection of the bamboos and at least we can conserve them for the future uses and the third that is the most important is that if we are going with the conservation of the bamboo at the same time when we go in the hilly areas the bamboo is growing just like a waste land actually they are not using bamboo for their own purposes so how could we 
uh, encourage them to use the bamboo and to send the bamboo uh, to another place for the different purposes oh, i mean i don't know which species you are saying uh, i think in general it is very difficult to make any comment on bamboos that this species is not being used because these people are uh, more knowledgeable than all of us they know which species is uh, good for what purpose uh, i i gave three habits uh, basic uh, broad habits of bamboos one is a climbing bamboo you will be surprised to know that these climbing bamboos are very popular and very few populations are left in the world uh, in in india now they are used like bent jaise hota hai na calamus species right they are very flexible and all nets mats and even hats uh, and fishing uh, things uh, fishing rods and those sort of things they use those uh, and even for tying up uh, small things they use those so they know which species is good for what purpose uh, most of uh, but industry demand is too high i mean uh, nobody can say that they are not using it because then another thing is kalm takes minimum 3 to 5 years it may look like a grown up kalm as uh, dr felix was saying that within a few days it uh, grows taller than most of the i mean it attains the full height in one season ground uh, one uh, growing season but it takes 3 to 4 years to mature that complete uh, strength to that comes within 3 to 4 years so unless that comes you cannot use it for uh, purpose uh, i mean definite purpose uh, conservation then what was i i forgot your other part of your question yeah delayed in flowering associated with the conservation issue no no we we never i mean i will never advocate that we should delay the flowering uh, because no. it, it is a delayed natural flowering. cycle yeah. natural cycle of uh, we are not delaying it's a natural delay in flowering it has got its own life cycle as human beings we have a life cycle of 60 uh, 60 to 80 100 years so so they have a life cycle of for example 80 but that life cycle is terminated once they flower you see once they flower that they will die off so one way because the whole population has died off Uh, so younger uh, generation will not be there unless somebody protects that those seeds or they allow them to grow on their own in that area so that's where the con- uh, conservation becomes important if that species is rare or is vulnerable or under threat critically then germplasm conservation germplasm conservation is live germplasm conservation then of course seed conservation these are two which i told those seven eight are the places where they are already doing in a very good way and uh, chisa in arunachal pradesh uh, their fri dehradun then uh, tbgri at trivandrum uh, they have and tfri uh, in um, uh, near calicut they have very good uh, seed banks germplasm banks um, unfortunately the bamboo was so far kept as a as a timber it was not being allowed by the government to be harvested at the same time foresters were not treating it as a timber so it was a, it's a very del- great dilemma for the bamboo pe- I mean, people who loved get bamboo so now once the government has uh, taken it out of a timber uh, those uh, forest act so the, i hope you hope that it will not be we we also hope that it will be conserved it will not be over exploited so that it should not end uh, it's very survival So we have a question from Shweta from Charkand, and she would like to know what is the behavior of the molecular structure of the bamboo fibers after its pyrolysis. Bamboo fibers? No, I I don't have any idea about. I am not. Ex- I'm sorry, I am not expert on this field, but I can yeah. get you an idea. Bam, uh, bamboo fiber after pyrolysis or molecular? What what she is talking about? Can you can you just forward this question to me? I will try. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. i will because i am not a, basically shweta i am a taxonomist hardcore morphological taxonomist uh, uh, i don't have we have been collaborating with the people who are working in yeah, different molecular fields, structure so. of bamboo fibers yeah it is a more or less a molecular question no molecular structure of bamboo, bamboo fiber is like any other fiber it's uh, um, it's another woody fiber molecular structure i think is the sweta sweta is, is asking 
technical part. So uh, basically, this NIT Silchar. Um, uh, there is a fellow in I, I forgot his name, but uh, I, he's from mechanical engineering department. So he's the one who's looking after uh, this. Uh, uh, I mean, strengthening of the bamboo fiber so that that can be used into the. I think uh, if she meant. To be Oh, you mean to say uh, strengthen the bamboo fiber so that, uh, but bamboo fiber is, I can show you the pictures I have got, uh, where even bridges have been made with the bamboo. Long span bridges without any, any sort of a support. In, uh, of course, you have to strengthen it, but if you are using, my personal take on this is, if you are using chemical processes to strengthen it, I will not advocate for that because you are again adding uh, some environmental issues into that. Uh, similarly, there was uh, a few years back, there was a lot of uh, advertisement about uh, bamboo textile that they, they were making very, I mean, uh, wrong sort of a claim that they are making uh, uh, bamboo fiber, uh, bamboo textiles, which is uh, not possible because bamboo fiber is so short, it cannot be spun. So what they were actually use, doing it, they were making rayon uh, with the bamboo fiber. So rayon is not in fact a, a, a organic uh, or, a, or a, you cannot say it's a natural fiber. It, it's a derivative using uh, pulp, uh, bamboo pulp as a primer to make a rayon, a artificial fiber. So they, even Europe has then uh, declined to label it as a bamboo textile. They have said at the most, you can say that rayon derived from bamboo. Rayon is artificial fiber. So bamboo species, you have to be very careful when you go for strength. So if you are doing a random analysis about ba uh, this bamboo and say that you are strengthening a bamboo, which is a structurally weak bamboo, a species which is very fragile in nature also, because there is a lot of data available on the natural strength of the fibers of bamboo, uh, particularly two, three species stand out. One is bambusa bamboo, then there is a, I think bambusa tolda is there, which is very strong uh, bamboo with a straight uh, culm. Uh, a, a number of more are there with their strength is really good. You need not to do any chemical investment or uh, into that, uh, making their, <laughs> them artificially strong. I think we are uh, not, uh, not uh, relying on nature, where nature itself has got so many answers to our problems. Rather than finding those solutions in the nature, we are trying to artificially create problems and then find answers for them. Okay, so we have a one person from Harpal Singh from Baba Farid College in Bhatinda. Oh, well, he's from our city only. So he's asking, sir, can we work in collaboration with Central University for conservation and domestication of the bamboo species? Uh, what is the name of that person? Harpal. Uh, he's ask, yeah, Harpal Singh, his name. And he want to start a collaboration with our university for conservation and domestication of the bamboo species. Aja Sardar Harpal Singh ji, tu si manu sonar rehen hoa, sasri kaal, meri gal enni thodi naal beinti hai, jarak, asi di madala Punjab University, Bhatinda, jethe thodi nwaali bethe hain, koi bhi gal hoa hai, aapka baith ke discuss kar saagde hain, te mutually, jeda ik dujhe naal beneficial hoa, aapka kar saagde hain, vich koi baddi gal nahi hai, aapka forest department bhi involve kar saagde hain, and aapna thadda botanical garden bau badda ban rehe hai, ek name campus cha, we can discuss. I think uh, for other listeners, I can say that we can do that. Uh, there is no problem. Those who cannot uh, understand Punjabi, uh, it's possible to do conservation, but uh, somebody has to find land for that, where we will conserve it, what we will conserve it, and uh, uh, what is the idea behind conservation? I is it for prospecting, bioprospecting, we want to do anything? Or is it just for a conservation purpose? Because uh, our objective will decide which species we are going to conserve. And we have to be careful in deciding the species and the area where we want to conserve it. Because Bhatinda is uh, very climatically, very sort of a, it has got a very harsh summer at the same time, very cool winters. So we have to select the species very carefully, bamboo particularly. So, all right, please. sir. I think it's all, all already time. 
Uh, Vinay, would you like to add some? Yeah, some just one question from the pitch? listener. Otherwise, so, we can. Could you the give the example of a few species which can be used as a in the house and in the garden? Oh, commercial. Actually, I avoided that because I was given the topic about wild. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question, uh, Vinay. Actually, there are so many species which are uh, horticulturally, commercially, people even as house plants, green plants in shades, uh, people like it. One is a Buddha belly uh, bamboo, which is very, very popular, where internodes are shorter than the uh, breadth of the plant. So it gives a very, uh, and the color of the, uh, I mean, um, column is also, sometimes it is uh, yellow. So yellow, that gives a very attractive with the green foliage. Sometimes there are striations on that, yellow striations, that makes it very attractive. So there are a number of species which are, and there are some Japanese and Chinese species, small dwarf like bonsai, which are being cultivated uh, as in-house plants. Uh, canes, palms, and bamboos as in-house plants, people are uh, loving them now. And there are a number of species. I can share that, uh, that uh, link also with you if you're interested. Uh, but I am only afraid that bamboo, uh, our Batinda is very dry region. We will have to take extra care. Uh, humidity has to be required for them because most of the species, except uh, uh, one or two, which can grow, which are hardy, uh, which can grow in dry areas. Others will be very difficult to grow in Batinda. So we first time know ki Dr. Paramjit is a bamboo man and uh -huh. he is the head of no, the No, no, I am I'm still uh, actually to be very frank, I still find it very, 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 I mean, uh, complicated group uh, because it's not fitting into the traditional flower, fruit, leaf, stem uh, structure, you see. It has got a very different architecture, different way of growth, flower, fruit, everything you have to interpret in a different way here. And it's very confusing if you have come uh, through a training and here you have to depend on vegetative characters mostly. So sometimes very trivial characters. So one last question, Dr. Felix. So do you work other than other crops uh, as compared to the bamboo? So do you discover some new species uh, in another plants also? May you yeah, mention yeah, those yeah. things? Yeah, yeah. Other than bamboo, we have, because my basically my PhD was on grape, wild grapes actually. Wild grapes means a family Vitaceae, which is a, a Vitaceae, which represents uh, this uh, grapes which we have. So we have more than sixty-five different kinds. I could go throughout the country and see them. Uh, I could um, find two, three interesting species, new ones in that. And some which are very good for as a rootstock for growing grapes, because you know in so many uh, agriculture crops, particularly horticulture crops, rootstock has to be very. Sometimes, if you want to introduce a, a new variety or some uh, alien uh, variety, rootstock is required to be local one, which can grow, and then you can graft with some uh, elite uh, variety on that. So that I worked on that. Then uh, we recently found a new Arnabia, which is uh, which is a medicinally plant, uh, important plant from Ladakh uh, that uh, has been published in Nordic Journal of Botany. And uh, one cycas was discovered by one of my colleagues from uh, Nicobar, Andaman Nicobar. Like that, uh, we have been working on different groups, grasses. Then, so it's very good that you worked in. Yeah, go ahead, Felix. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, sir. And it's always a pleasure to listen to you. And it's the second time I'm listening to you. Uh, you might remember that, you know, uh, first time was uh, when you spoke about molecular systematics in the workshop by, you know, the Indian Academy of Sciences sponsored lecture workshop. So yes, apparently this is also a lecture workshop, though in NIAS CUPB. And uh, yeah, it's always pleasure. And thank you so much for enlightening us with your knowledge on bamboo and especially wild Himalayan bamboo. It's amazing talk. And thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Felix, for giving me opportunity. But I think I could cover only a small bit. Uh, there is still ocean of knowledge available uh, with the people. I, I hope only if a few of the youngsters are uh, curious enough about bamboos, I think my day is there. I mean, yes. I have my day. I mean, sure. That is the, my only. I, Niyas, uh, I hope uh, I am also thankful to Inyas, and I hope Inyas will 
uh, in future uh, facilitate such youngsters to take up some basic science questions also thank Especially you thank you we really need a uh, more you know more youngsters to come up with yeah, the taxonomy right, so right, right. i'm sure many of the viewers must be interested in taxonomy so please uh, you know write us back if you are interested to pursue in this field we encourage you to choose a uh, uh, you know a taxonomy related discipline so we have so much of species to be discovered especially in india you know and please uh, do that thank you sir thank you so much for thank today's you. talk thank wonderful you talk thank you everyone thank you all the participants and uh, particularly felix and inias and you know, our university our vice chancellor everyone thank you once again so tomorrow tomorrow we have a uh, two talks 11 am is by arvind madhyastha on mollusk and then uh, uh, evening 3:30 is by karthik balasubramaniam on diatom so let us explore the world of mollusk and diatoms tomorrow and uh, i will see you all at 11 am tomorrow goodbye all and have a nice day so you have logged out now yeah felix oh, yeah, yeah it was really nice sir absolutely fantastic session no i don't know i oh, was no, very very confused i mean stop i said to